Good morning and welcome to this week. We join you this morning from Boulder, Colorado, after spending the week on a cross-country road trip speaking with voters across the nation. The background to this election, a global pandemic, a struggling economy, and massive unrest amidst calls for change. Overnight in Portland, dramatic images of firebombs thrown at officers. In Rochester, continuing demonstrations after the death of Daniel Prude in police custody. And a different uproar this morning, the president facing allegations he disparaged fallen soldiers, calling them suckers and losers. Former Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel will join me to respond in a moment. We begin, though, with the voice of the voter. For months, COVID has made it nearly impossible for us to travel the country, but this last week we were determined to safely drive across America to see close up what's behind the polls in this ever-tightening race. We begin in the state that arguably handed Donald Trump his 2016 victory, but now has Joe Biden with a narrow lead. It has been a 2,200-mile journey through America's cities and towns, some abandoned from the COVID outbreak, some far too crowded for safety, others bearing the scars of racial injustice and the fallout. But everywhere we went, the presidential election loomed, from the suburbs with manicured lawns sprouting political preferences to the heartland where even massive wind turbines and endless fields were dominated by politics. Which is why we began our journey in the battleground state of Pennsylvania. Well, I'm Joe Scholler. I'm a fourth generation sheet metal worker. And an ardent Biden supporter. Donald Trump just lacks empathy. Joe Biden has seen tragedy in his life. So I think he has the empathy this country needs right now. And it's personal. The once friendly policy talks with neighbors have ended. It's a lot of anger, screaming and, <laughs> and yelling. Uh, it's, it's, it's very hard to get down to the, uh, to the nuts and bolts of things. As the country grapples with this contentious election, the reckoning on race is front and center. President Trump has cast himself as the law and order candidate, a message that Trump's base embraces. What do you think of Biden? Uh, I don't trust him. For these lifelong Hamilton, Ohio residents, Trump's word is gospel. I think he almost walks on water. Mary Rose Durbin says Trump is an imperfect man, but a perfect president. Well, <laughs> they couldn't buy him, and they can't control him. Every promise that he made in 2016 that he has followed through on or tried to, and she will not be convinced otherwise, even on Trump's low support from African Americans, just 11 percent. Why do you think there's not more support for him in the African American community? Oh, honey, I think there's a lot more support for him in the African American community than the media is giving credit for. And I think in November, it's going to show. He is speaking to his avid followers. He's not speaking to me and he's not speaking for me. Democrat Alicia Triggs is a voter in the suburbs of Cincinnati, alienated by Trump's rhetoric. It doesn't reflect my views at all. From the Buckeye State, we headed towards the gateway of the West, St. Louis. That iconic arch greeting us the next morning against an overcast sky. In nearby Ferguson, Missouri, a city aflame after the police shooting of Michael Brown in 2014, that was a new business. I Kathy Jenkins' was restaurant already... was nearly shut down. My numbers had dropped so low. I, I always say I, I almost felt like I was underwater, breathing through a straw. After those protests, Jenkins, a Biden supporter, started a successful delivery service, but is counting on things getting better. It's not just about making money, but it's about caring and changing lives. But those bread and butter issues are vital in this election. No matter where you go across America, no matter who you talk to, one of the biggest issues is the economy and jobs. The pandemic also hitting Benjamin Brown's bottom line. 
We were started off the year about 17% up over the best year that we had. And then all of a sudden you start hearing these reports about this virus that's coming in. Did you have to lay off employees? Uh, we did. And while Trump's response to the crisis has been fiercely criticized, the president still has Brown's vote. Back on the open road, another some 200 miles under a picture-perfect Missouri sky. We're kind of changing our business model. For a meeting with a local rancher. The heartland is considered Trump country, but Michael Billings is the exception. He's the owner of this 300-acre bison ranch. What has COVID done to your business? Some of the effects of COVID have essentially shut us down. We can't get our animals to the market. We can't sell product. <laughs> Billings, who did not vote for Trump in 2016, is putting his support behind Biden. How do you deal with your neighbors who are Trump supporters? Do you talk about it? Do you? <laughs> the climate of the nation is such that I wouldn't be surprised if I put up a sign and then my fence is cut and my buffalo are out. But not everyone has made up their mind. Farmer Robert Hazelton and his nephew Ryan Johnson both voted independent in 2016 and are still undecided this time. Will the debates make a difference, do you think? No. Would, did, did the Republican National Convention speech make a difference? I didn't even listen to it. Hazelton says he likes Trump's support of farmers, but doesn't like some of the way Trump does things. And uh, Ryan? I've never voted for a Democrat at the top of the ticket. Uh, I haven't ruled it out this time. The final leg of our journey, nearly eight hours. From the cornfields in Kansas to the mountains of Colorado, Colorado is a classic battleground state, a purple state. There are extremists on the left, extremists on the right, and everything in between. These last four years have been uh, really tough, particularly for the Latino community. We've been antagonized by this uh, administration. Salvador Hernandez helps the Latino community of Colorado engage in the political process and says Joe Biden could be doing more to reach that key demographic. I currently don't know like what his platform is going to be other than, you know, I'm better than Donald Trump. Soon after we arrived in Denver, this bombshell headline alleging Trump called fallen American soldiers suckers and losers, an accusation the president has forcefully denied. Tell me what your reaction was when you read that article about the Broke things. my heart. Charlie Broke Dominguez heart. is a Vietnam War veteran. We're not losers. We're not suckers. You, the government sent us over there. We didn't it send me, send me to the war. The government sent us to go fight for this country. But others we spoke to, like veteran Nick Gray, are more skeptical. My immediate reaction was, what is this? This doesn't make a lot of sense. And each allegation was supported by anonymous sources. So you simply don't believe the article? Absolutely not. As for how Gray measures the president? The actions. And what are the actions of the president? What has he done for the military, but also for the veterans as well? He tweets a lot, he says a lot, I think that's all about going after a certain voting bloc. It's not what he really feels. And so when you take it back to national security, I'm really worried that he's gonna put men and women needlessly in harm's way. Veteran Drew Sloan, a West Point graduate who was severely wounded in Afghanistan, served in Iraq as well. When you first saw it, did it surprise you? Did it make you angry? It didn't surprise me. I, you can see what he said about Senator McCain um, from the very start. I think this is someone who respects the military vote, but that's not the same thing as respecting military service. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.